Hi, hi, welcome back. Welcome back to Let's Learn Something, the show where I explain something, just something random. Could be something about psychology, like this video again today, just like last video was about behavioral activation. Video got me a lot of traction, posted it on a couple of Reddit forums, and it gained me some new subscribers. So it definitely seemed like a good idea to do something like that again, because I like psychology, I like psychiatry, it's my field of studying, so I better do like it, and I like making videos about it, for that matter. You can see my, my disarranged Wally wally covers right there he's in the video like wally great movie but that's not what we're gonna talk about today we're gonna talk about the first rank symptoms for schizophrenia now just a very quick introduction to the diagnosis itself schizophrenia is a very harsh diagnosis to give to someone it's a disorder characterized by delusions hallucinations disorganized speech and also the so-called negative symptoms to give some examples, a very well-known delusion is the delusion of grandeur, where you think that you are famous, you're the most amazing person in the world and everybody should bow to you, so especially. There's also, for example, the delusion that the news anchor is talking directly to you. It's basically like really thoughts that can be true in reality, but for you, in your mind, they really seem to be true. Now, hallucinations, I don't think that really needs an explanation. It's a typical symptom for psychotic disorders like schizophrenia, or for example, someone that's withdrawing from alcohol, they can also experience hallucinations. You can see that in the movie Train Spotting, even though it's not alcohol there, I think, but probably some other drugs. It's called delirium, what they experience, but that's not what this video is about either. Disorganized speech could be in the content of the speech or the way they are speaking. It could, for example, be very rattly, very intertwined with each other, all the sentences, and you can't really make sense of it. And then finally, the negative symptoms are important as well. And an example of that is, for example, effective flattening in a quite, a quite literal way of looking at it. Now, flattening, what I mean by that is normally your, your effective state is like this, right? It's wavy throughout the day. You have periods where you feel good, periods where you feel a bit worse, but, but people with those negative symptoms, their effect looks more like this. It's just a straight line. And that straight line is probably going to be a bit below the average person's fluctuation. So it's kind of also a bit of a depressed mood. Now, it's not because someone has those symptoms that they automatically have schizophrenia, of course. There's a bit of a spectrum in it, just like in, for example, autism spectrum disorder, where there's, the spectrum ranges from really, really bad cases to kind of well-functioning cases. In scientific terms, that means that the prognosis, so what you expect the disease to evolve into, or the patient, what you expect him to experience in the future, or how we will respond to treatment, that can vary. But in general, as mentioned, it is a heavy diagnosis. And that's why you should refrain from automatically telling someone they have schizophrenia when you notice some of the symptoms. That's not, some, not something that you want to do. Just keep it in the back of your head as a possible disorder, a possible diagnosis for this case, but don't just go throwing the diagnosis around. Now the question is, when should you start thinking about the diagnosis? Because I keep saying don't throw it around, but when do you have to put it on the table? Now here, Kurt Schneider comes into play. He's a German psychiatrist that has actually lived through two world wars. And in the second world war, he really, really was disgusted by what the Nazis were doing, which is a great thing, of course. He was specialized in the field of psychotic disorders like schizophrenia and also personality disorders. And he posed exactly the same question. When do we need to start thinking about the diagnosis of schizophrenia? And now to answer that aforementioned question, he wrote something about the first rank symptoms. And that's what this video is really about. Now, if you notice these symptoms in a person, it might be time to start thinking about the diagnosis of schizophrenia. Still though, hold on with actually articulating the diagnosis to the patient before you're completely sure. Now, these first rank symptoms described by Schneider are actually easily remembered by the, their first letters, and that's A, B, C, D, first four letters of the alphabet, of course. Now, the letter A stands for auditory hallucinations, and that's possibly the most well-known symptom of schizophrenia, or it's a symptom that people like automatically associate with psychotic disorders. Not everyone with psychotic disorders has them though, and not everyone that has auditive hallucinations has psychotic disorders automatically. Now these could be voices giving remarks or blaming you for something, but they could also be giving out orders, and that's where it gets really dangerous, because if you're working an office job and there's a voice in your head telling you to jump out of the 25th story window where your cube because it's located, that could turn out gnarly. That's A. Then there's the second one, B, and that's about broadcasting of thought. This is about the scary delusion that your mind, your internal space is not safe anymore and it is broadcasted to the world. Now I call this one scary because I can't imagine how frightening it must feel. The only safe haven you can normally always rely on gets compromised in this delusion, like even your internal mind, your internal safe space is not safe anymore. The third symptom starting with the letter c is controlled thoughts and it's actually really related to the symptom with b 
Here with controlled thoughts, it's about the idea that your thoughts are being controlled by someone or something else. And that means that they can they can take away thoughts or they can put thoughts into your mind or they can just like re re reform the thoughts that you have. Similar remarks about this being scary can be made, of course. And then the final one, D, delusional perception. Normal perception gets a special meaning in these patients and it gets incorporated into their delusional system. Think for example, someone hearing another random person on the street saying their name. Now regular people will probably be like, I say regular people, I don't want to sound stigmatizing, but just for the ease of interpretation, I'm going to call them regular people. We'll probably think like, oh, that person's probably talking about another Vincent. That's my name. But someone with psychiatric vulnerability, or well, someone who is vulnerable for a schizophrenic disorder, they will maybe start to lay connections like, wow, were they talking about me? Maybe they're following me. And I just saw this white fan in my street earlier today and then on the radio they also said and they start relating everything to their delusional system in their head and well you get the general idea now every one of these symptoms of these four on its own is enough to start thinking about the diagnosis thinking about it not setting the diagnosis i want to make that point very clear that's why i keep repeating it when multiple symptoms are present of course the probability of the diagnosis rises even further short recap schizophrenia you should call it psychiatric vulnerability, that's a more appropriate term, but that term will get into trouble later again, because there's not really a great non-stigmatizing term for it, but either way. Schizophrenia, very heavy diagnosis of a psychiatric disorder. They have some symptoms that are easily recognizable that were described by Kurt Schneider, German psychiatrist, and he described the ABCD first rank symptoms. 1. A. Auditory hallucinations. 2. B broadcasting of thought tree c control of thoughts and then d delusional perception and one more time finally for good measure be careful before stamping that label onto someone because it's a harsh label to live with and it's an even harder label to get rid of hope you learned something